And now we get to uh, uh, start to think about how industrialized construction is coming to Switzerland, especially through the lens of circularity. So I'm very excited to introduce Alex Mirasan, who um, has founded a company, spun off of um, his time at APFL on circular uh, construction systems. I won't say too much because I'll let him do more of the introduction, the details, but we're very happy to have you here, Alex, and uh, we look forward to having your um, to hearing how your journey has gone in uh, in this area. So I turn it over to you now and feel free to begin whenever you're ready. Okay, thanks, Daniel. Thanks for, for the invitation to present here today and also thanks for the nice introduction. Um, I just want to comment that um, the company is not founded yet. We're, we are planning to do it as soon as possible. We are very young with, with, uh, with high hopes. I so, I was yeah. wondering about that when I said founded. I thought mm, maybe it's not founded yet. But yeah, 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 it's, okay. it's, it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fine. It's I think in I, startup mode. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. And it's good to be in this mode, and uh, it's good to be there because you're not uh, you're not paying taxes at this point, and it's it's a somehow somehow warm location where to be right now. But <laughs> you need to to focus more on on getting revenue. And so on in the future so yeah i just want to say but that i'm not very uh different from you guys from the from the students from as as the project is going for me as well and um yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna start sharing my screen um, So I guess everyone can see my screen now. So I'm I'm Alex. Um, I'm engineer, structural engineer, and um, since four years ago I started uh, working at uh, EPFL Structural Exploration Lab as um, a research assistant, and I'm also doing some some research at um, School for Engineering and Architecture in Fribourg. Um, during this period at, at Structural Exploration Lab, we developed. Um, structural system that can be reused over multiple life cycles and from here it started the idea of, of uh, spinning off uh, a startup and um, yeah we're the, the startup is called Eternum and we are focusing on uh, offering sustainable readaptable and relocatable buildings um, the content of our presentation I'm going to start presenting you the problem um, then I'm going to discuss our solution, the business idea and the business model. I'm going to discuss about a bit of the competition and the competitive advantages that we have, also a bit of the risks. And um, in the end, I want to, to end up to this, to, to end up my presentation with a discussion, with an open discussion with you all. Um, feel free to interrupt me when you have questions. It's there, there's no there's no problem. Um, and uh, first, I'm going to show you a series of buildings. Um, they're all high-rise buildings, and um, they come from all over the world in, in Europe, North America, Asia. I want you to think of, and if possible, to answer uh, what all of these buildings have in common. What do you think? What's your opinion about this? They're all, no, I was gonna say they're all square, but no, some are circular, <laughs> some are, some are uh, not rectangular. Yeah, I can say that most of them have concrete structures and steel structures, but yeah. Yeah, others this from is... the Others from the class, we can see if they want to answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they all being torn down? Yes, great. That's a great <laughs> answer. Yes. None of these buildings exist anymore. Actually, you're the first one who, who answered this. Yes, great. Um, yeah, we've done a study on 200 demolished buildings. And um, we've discovered that even if we had found buildings that were demolished after more than 100 years and other buildings that were demolished even before being completed, so, so the, the, the structure was not finished, 
their average lifespan is less than 40 years. Then um, we've uh, assessed the impact on the environment of these buildings. And we've determined, we've estimated that uh, more than 3.8 million tons of concrete and 200,000 tons of steel were, were wasted. And um, as well, one, more than 1 million tons of CO2 equivalent was emitted in the atmosphere for these buildings, which right now don't exist anymore. Um, when we um, assess the demolition reasons, we've discovered that only 13% of the buildings had some structural problems and they needed to be demolished because of that. Most of them uh, were demolished because um, we can call it obsolescence, but mm, the majority of them were, were demolished because the owners wanted to um, redevelop the site. They, they needed, actually, they needed the land to build something new in, its, in, in, in that place. And uh, it's, it's, it's similar to the way we've, um, to the way we discard our mobile devices to every three years or so. It is from the same reasons the buildings are demolished in less than 40 years. Um, so we've determined that there is, there is a problem there. There is a customer pain, so to say, and this is the, the need for updates. The, the, the problem is uh, that the real estate assets fail to keep up with the users and the owner's needs. And um, at one point in time, every building owner has to take the decision whether to renovate the building or to demolish and redevelop it. Both of them involve costs and time, and also both of them produce waste. And um, in both cases, the, the operations have to, to be stopped, which uh, interrupt the revenue streams and so on. So this is, this is the major issue, but then there is also a big unmet market need which is the, the readaptability of the buildings at a smaller scale. Uh, for example, um, when um, a new tenant comes into uh, an office building, he has different needs than the previous one, but the building fails to readapt fastly to his needs. As well in the, in the residential building sector, uh, the buildings are hardly readaptable in, 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 in time, in short time, uh, spends. Um, at our last uh, in industrial construction forum, I um, there was a presentation from the, the head architect from Google, from Michelle Kaufman. She presented uh, uh, the new headquarters of Google, and she stated that there was the need of office spaces that are able to be uh, changed or, or to, to, to be modified over the weekend according to the needs of their teams. So this is, this is a very demanding task in, in, in order to, so, so to design the building such that it can readapt over the weekend. Um, so do we think it's possible to have a building, to have a building that can um, update its features as easy and as fast as a software update does? Uh, yeah, we believe yes, and this is our objective. We want to offer um, readaptable and um, reusable buildings, relocatable and reusable buildings, which are sustainable, turnkey, and uh, for residential and commercial real estate in um, so-called building as a product approach. Um, I'm going to walk you through a bit of what readaptable, what 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 this sentence means. The readaptable part is it refers to the interiors, to the finishing of the building. The relocatable, I think, is self-explanatory, and reusable refers to the whole stock of elements, not only uh, the finishes but also the structure and, and substructure of the building. And then sustainable is clear and turnkey it means basically it's fully finished product. So this is our objective. <clears throat> How do we do that? We've developed and we are still developing a um, um, circular product platform. Actually, this is a set of, um, sorry. 
this is a this is a set of uh, sustainable manufacturer components that uh, can be assembled together to create um, the building spaces and uh, they can be reconfigured then over multiple life cycles for different uses but the the, the advantage is that this set of uh, components is not constraining the shape and the layout of the buildings. And how does it work? This is the main module, which is made of timber with uh, steel connections. And here you can see the modules are connected together and stacked to create the, the slabs. And then the same modules can be reused in order to create a totally different building in a totally different configuration for different applications. For example, here it can be reused later in the future in a residential application for smaller housing units. This is, a, this is our novel technology and we have um, a patent pending right now with the help of TTO from EPFL. And um, we've developed, actually, uh, we've also manufactured a prototype with the help of a manufacturing uh, unit here in, in Switzerland, it's a company. Uh, you can see here, it's the, let's say the just the structure, the, just the first module, and um, you can see it's the first version of the prototype. Uh, we, uh, we actually managed to get a lot of valuable information from this prototype and we are, have many uh, improvements uh, ideas to, to, to implement. Um, then we did some mechanical testing on, um, on the same type of elements on beams to determine their mechanical uh, properties and to see how it, how, how we can use this, this system. And um, now we are planning to build a prototype, what we call it prototype room proof of concept. And this will include not only the structure and the, and the slab structure, as, as I showed you earlier, we plan to manufacture it as a whole and to see all the components, how they work together and how they fit together. And then um, another project that we are aiming is to offer readaptable school buildings. And for example, here we design a school on the left. We have a school that is designed for a certain amount of kids. And then uh, later in the future, when uh, the need for this uh, number of school places is reduced, we can, we can uh, take this building somewhere else and rebuild it in a totally different shape for a totally different number of, of uh, kids. Um, so, how does it work? I think I think you've already seen something uh, related to this. Um, I, I, I've seen not that uh, not fully yet. It's coming, so uh, we'll talk about these platforms more. But uh, yeah, they're starting to understand this idea of a product platform for sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is this is actually this is a um, quite new term for me as well because I've as as I'm not native in English. For me, it's, it, it meant something very specific but then when i when i search it and when i looked up for it uh I, I found that it has has more meaning behind it um so as you see here on the left um the volkswagen group has a um a chassis that they use uh, in between different cars and also in between different uh, brands within the within the group so this is this is a valuable uh, element for them because they they don't change anything. They just manufacture it continuously in for for different products. This is what a product platform is called. But what they are lacking is the the fact that their product is uh, is not necessarily reusable. It's recyclable. So it's a it's a bigger uh, circular. Uh, way, but it is not reusable. They still end up being crushed in the end, and they uh, they produce waste with it. What we plan to do here on the right is to use this um, this product platform, this these components that we've developed in multiple application, but without producing much waste. We try to reduce the waste and to reuse most of it. This is the main idea behind. 
Um, and from this, our business model was tailored such that it benefits, uh, it gives us the benefits from the circular economy or the circularity of the system. And we start with customer acquisition and um, then we offer the, to the customer, we offer the services of design with the help of our, um, our own design tool. And then uh, we also do the manufacturing, the delivery and the building of the, of the product in the end. But then we stick with the customer for a long-term cycle, which um, gives him other services like redesign, readapt, reuse and relocate of his own uh, stock of elements of his own building, so to say. Uh, the first, uh, the first cycle, it's a short term cycle, which gives us uh, short term upfront revenue. And then we also have a long term recurrent cycle, which gives us recurrent revenue. Um, so yeah, this is, this is how we try to um, benefit as much as possible from the circularity of, of our system. Now, you also have to think who is your customer for us. Um, a simple way to, to think is real estate owners, but who are actually these real estate owners? Um, it's, it's a bit hard to assess. For example, there are government buildings and, and uh, universities and organizations with are, which are public on one side and on the other side, it's um, real estate investors, corporations, banks, or, or um, in hospitality like hotels and so on. Um, we think that our um, first customer could be the government if we assess our system from the uh, sustainability side, but we could also have customers from, from the real estate investing side um, if we assess our system economically, which I'm going to show you in a bit why. Um, then who is your competition? I think you also need to know who is your competition. I'm not sure if you went through such, a, such an exercise. Uh, it's not easy to assess and uh, it's not easy to assess because you, you don't know from which point of view you assess this competition. So for example, here I've uh, divided this in, in uh, four parts. Um, I said, we offer sustainable buildings and we offer readaptable buildings. So who's offering this? Who's offering, who, who's leaning more towards sustainability and who's leaning more towards readaptability? You can see there are many companies who are using woods and uh, engineered wood in their, in their uh, products, um, which I said, okay, yeah, they are more sustainable. And um, I consider readaptable. So in the middle, it's neutral readaptability. And I consider that, for example, the, the container uh, building systems, they are readaptable, but not as, as, the, as a, at the same level as our system is also to a, to a limited extent. And um, for example, here, um, I also have there are two types of competition, the direct competition and the indirect competition. For example, I considered at the bottom, there are um, big general contractors company, companies that um, are considered in a way indirect competition, but they are taking a huge share of, of, the, of the market in which we are active. So that's why I still kept them here in the, in the competition chart. Um, and then here, what's the competitive advantage? For example, here, the manufacturing in advance, it's a very important competitive advantage because um, for example, our system, we have, we have this, this um, so the, the product platform, we, we, we have these elements that can be manufactured without knowing uh, all the project details, without knowing, um, what the project would look like in the end, but all the components are identical or majority of the components are identical. We can start the manufacturing even before 
starting the project. We can we can have a stock of elements already produced uh, in advance, and this can uh, can give us an advantage of delivering projects 30% faster than other modular solutions that are already on the market. Another advantage here it's it's regarding the cost. If we consider, and, and as I said earlier, the, the lifespan of a building is about uh, 40 years on average. Um, if we consider the cost um, for an investment, for example, here we have three different life cycles of um, an existing system of an existing building system and also the um, on, on the left side you have the initial investment how much it costs to build the building and then the maintenance plus um, the cost of demolishing the building at the end of life and on the right side in each life cycle you have uh, the revenue you gain when you rent the building or the, the spaces from the building and also a sm small margin of profit on top of it and this is done for example for four for, for three different life cycles so the building is built, then after 40 years is demolished and again and again. But uh, in our model, uh, if we consider that the, the system is reusable, you invest at the beginning a certain amount of time, we can consider it equal to, to, to the other systems. And then later in the future, you just invest in uh, maintenance and in uh, readaptations and relocating the, the system. But then the uh, the profit, the margin profit would be would be higher, and then we can consider over a period uh, over uh, three life cycles we can consider it that it can become even fifty percent cheaper. Why the life cycle? Um, I, I wrote here smaller than forty years. I believe that um, this forty years is due to the current way of building, of of, of how buildings work. So they, are, they weren't designed to be reused later in the future. But if we design buildings to be reused, I think this will uh, incentivize the owners to reuse their buildings faster and their, their, the elements um, much faster than 40 years. That's why I think probably this um, life cycle or the, the total of 120 years will become even, even lower than that. So, what are other competitive advantages? First of all, it's uh, vertical integration. Uh, this means to um, vertically integrate all the value chain. So as I showed you in the business model, the design of the building, the manufacturing and uh, transport and, and, and assembly. Also industrial is manufacturing. It's, uh, it's giving a lot of competitive advantages. Uh, compared to classic uh, way of, of, of building uh, our buildings right now. So this gives us a lot of quality in the product and, and uh, optimization in the use of resources and, and waste and emissions. Also the fact that it's a product platform, it gives us um, a higher versatility of, of using the components than uh, reduce costs when, when uh, we have to redesign the product and also the, the reusability of the elements and the flexibility of the way we use the elements. Then another advantage for us uh, is due to reversibility, the fact that the building is made of components that can be fast uh, disassembled and uh, quickly uh, removed from the location. This reduces the risk of obtaining the building, the, the building permits. This is the risking of it, the process of, of permitting the, the construction. And then also another, um, another advantage is the fact that um, due to modularity and, and automation, uh, the workforce on site and also off site is, uh, is reduced, which are, are reducing are, are important right now in the, in the current situation. And um, this is important when, when you assess your risks as well. So coming to risks, um, for us, 
one of the major it's not necessarily a risk it's a weakness let's say it's the this this industry and what we are trying to do is very capital intensive that means you need to have an important uh, investment at the beginning in order to be able to to deliver products in the end also the costs of the products are high so for example here in switzerland uh, and probably not only here a square meter of a building it's about 2000 2000 francs and we're not talking about one square meter selling one square, square meter only so yeah and also the the manufacturing phase it's uh, i call it manufacturing intensive it takes a lot of space and machinery and equipment in order to manufacture this and um, it's not the same as um, as a software product or something so that's why it's important to know this uh, the time dependency um, what i was thinking when i wrote this is that um, you need to take into account that the, a project may take a very long period of time in which uh, you have um, costs that are ongoing during this, this period of time and you need you need to cover for these costs before getting getting the money <laughs> before before getting paid for your product in the end and then probably one of the biggest uh, weakness is that we have to follow the current practices in, in this field which means there is a certain uh, a certain way of of doing uh, of doing the project and also you need to comply with certain regulations in terms of the technical design also fire safety and and uh, other safety regulations and which are sometimes hindering the development and sometimes hindering the um, the, yeah, the, the, the capacity of delivering uh, as fast as possible and um, yeah, the main takeaways from my side for you and for your projects would be um, first build a product to solve a problem and don't don't have a solution in search of a problem. I think this is this is important right now. Which I'm not sure if you have already um, ideas or if you have already uh, a product. Probably not. Uh, but this is this is really important and then the second would be to to have a solid solution solid technical solution that it's working before uh before trying to sell it and uh, yeah the third point would be know who your customer is this is important and how to approach the customer uh, know your competition and how to beat your competition and then probably the last thing would be to focus to deliver and then the rest of on uh, acquiring uh, raising raising funds or acquiring funds for uh, uh, increasing your startup and so on you have to deliver first and you have to prove that it's working first so yeah this is it if you want to find out more about the startup you can you can scan the QR code and you can you can find my details there to contact me.